the gold mine process 18 steps to success hi guys my name is Wayne Quinton I just want to talk to you about the 18 step process this will show you how you will only ever buy outstanding diamond properties this will help you choose the exact cities and streets you want to be buying your properties on otherwise known as a gold mine process now We've learned before that there are six key areas known as the six C's. We need to get these right so we only buy the right properties. We're not going to cover it here, so if you've not seen it, make a note or go and watch my six C's. Here's just a brief overview of the six C's. Uh, first C is capacity. So three and four bed houses, not flats, in the right city. City, in the right city, not necessarily close to you. You want to be, you want the best possible return on investment. Don't be buying because it's close to you. Buy the right city for the best financial return. Capital, you want capital appreciation. To get that, we buy close to great secondary or primary schools, good public transport networks, good road networks within five miles of a city centre, in a town or a city. Okay. Cash flow. You want great cash flow. And there are all sorts of rules to work work the cash flow out. Check. You want to check the property will rent before you buy it. Advertise the property will rent before you've even bought it. If you don't get ten replies in the first week, you walk away. Contingency. And you need to make sure you have contingency. Make sure you don't put every penny you have in the pot. So, if these are our rules, and these rules, by the way, will mean you only ever buy outstanding investment properties that will perform really well, you're going to get great capital growth, you're going to get great cash flow, you're going to be buying in the right places, the right types of properties, and you know they're going to rent well forever. So, if you cover all these bases, you know you're going to be in good shape. So, how do we know we're going to cover all areas of these bases? Well, here's how. We're going to follow the 18 step process. So, the first thing we're going to look at is number one, identify an area that you can buy properties between 70 and 140 grand. In fact, we just changed it this week. We now buy properties between 70 and 150,000 pounds. With RightView these days, it's really easy. Let's say, for example, we're looking to buy properties in, say, Bury. Here's Bury. I'm going to set the price range between 70,000 and 150 price bracket. And do a price comparison. And I'll bring all the properties within that price bracket in Bury. By the way, to be even more focused, I can find the postcode for the middle of Bury. That can either be the train station or city of the town it might be the town hall often in the center of the town i get the postcode and i can do my research within five miles of the town center and i look between 70 and 150 bracket and that brings me up loads of properties okay what's the second stage number two check school reports on ofsted uh, secondary schools need to be good to outstanding now I look for schools on the map I want every single school in Bury within five miles of a town centre and the schools Ofsted report and you google this school Ofsted report say the school is St Paul's so St Paul's Ofsted report Bury you can get this Ofsted report really easily so you google it and if the Ofsted report is good to outstanding you in if it's not good to outstanding you're out that simple so you're looking for an Ofsted report that's good to outstanding okay so now you're going to funnel in so now you've identified these school areas okay uh, you're only going to buy the properties within that mile radius of that school 
if you go out a mile in any direction from a school, it gives you quite a big area. Let's say in Bury, we have 15 schools. Now, with all five miles of a city centre that have good or outstanding Ofsted report. I'm going to adjust my search areas. So I adjust my search areas by saying, right, this particular school, I want, I want to look for all the houses within a mile radius of this school. So you do this on right move. You put the postcode of a school in and you want all the house, houses you can buy for 170, 150 within one mile of that postcode. Because you know it's good to outstand in secondary school and you're looking within a mile of that radius. If you get some properties that come up, then great. I have a spreadsheet with all the data on. So I'll do a search once and I've got it forever. If these properties come up, great. If no properties come up, then that school is out, and that area is out. So if some properties come up, I carry on checking. So now, some properties have come up with 15 different schools. I might do that. I might end up with, say, eight of those or ten. Let's say ten. That have properties in a value between 70 and 150 within a mile of a school that has a good to outstanding Ofsted report. Step three. To be clear on specific property type you are buying, for example, two beds that can be converted into a three bed or a semi detached. So, if you're looking for three beds and you know you want three to four bedrooms, you might be looking for three bedroom properties or a three bedroom semi detached in that area or two bed that can be converted into a three. But really, really get clear on the type of property that you're looking to buy. Because you want to compare apples to apples. Again, this can go on right move search. You can say I'm looking for three to four bedrooms, properties in this search area between 1750. What's step four? Check the area's good public uh, road network and good shopping nearby. To be honest with you, if you're five miles within the city town, centre you're pretty much certain to have these definitely within the city so within five miles of a town or city you're going to get a tick on this one what what step five check the area is within five miles of a city or a center yep we've done that so what's step six speak to three local lesson agents and see what they think the target market will rent for. So I speak to three local lesson agents, local to the school, and I speak to a lesson agent about the target property. So if you're looking for a free bed, terraced, go on right move and get its ULR. Tell the agent that you're thinking of buying this property. What do you think it'll rent for? By the way, letting agents usually rent out your property for less than what it's worth. Why? Until recently, letting agents could charge the tenant for going through referencing. Today, they can't do, do that. With gov the government's put a stop to it. So it costs a letting agent to carry out all these checks. So what do you do? They charge a little less to fill the property quicker. That's fine. We're aware of this. And we're not going to let our property out for this. But it'll work, with, work for us. And the purpose of this check. Remember... But we're going to stress test this. As well as speaking to a letting agent, I can also do some search on right move. Properties to let within a mile of a school to look at rents. I don't look at I don't have to look at all rents. If I'm buying a free bed terraced, I only look at free bed terraced what they rent for. So I speak to the agent, look and right move. So we have free valuations come in. 675, 650, 650. The highest value we're going to dismiss. Then we're going to average the bottom two figures. In our example, 650 plus 650 divided by two. Yep, you got it, it's 650. 
It'll make sense in a minute when we do the cash flow check. Remember, we're stress testing. It's a deselection process, not a selection process. We only want the very best that meet the rules. It's meant to be difficult, okay? We have an estimate rent for that particular property. So now I've got a feel for the properties I might be able to get and I've got an estimate for the rent for that particular school in effect. Seven, check cash flow for properties in this area by checking normal rents and running them through the cash flow check for what you think the average price is. Now, I check the cash flow for the properties in that area. Uh, area off of a normal cash flow rules. So we take our expected rent that we've just worked out, 650 remember? So in the case of this example, we're going to be buying a house on every street for 120 grand. So you look at what we're going to be buying a house for and it's going to be 75% loan to value. So with a mortgage of 90 grand, yes, we're going to take the rent at 650 per calendar month minus the mortgage of 450 pounds. Until recently, we used to stress test at 4.5%. But with the base rate increasing over the last few months, we now stress test at 6%. At the time of recording, the base rate was at 3%, not a lot, but massively different from what we've been used to. Now, 6% mortgage on 90 grand is 5,400 per annum. Divided by 12 equals 450 per calendar month. This is an interest all on the mortgage, yes? Minus the maintenance of 80 pound per calendar month, because the average three to four bed costs about a thousand pound a year okay minus 20 pound per calendar month for insurance minus letting agent fees coming in at 70 pound a month you make sure the money you've got left is enough when you times it by 11 why 11 this allows a property to be empty for one month of the year due to a tenant change and the cash flow must cover the rent for that month that's assuming you have a tenant change once a year. By the way, if you buy these to the rules, um, tenants usually stay to four to five years, some even longer. Most ten tenancies operate at a 98% occupancy, so there's not a lot of transiency. So, in our example, if we make a property of £30 a calendar month, on average, times 11 equals 330 pounds this needs to be greater than the 650 so in this example it wouldn't pass you would not buy this property you'd walk away now if the rent was 700 pound a calendar month and the profit was 80 pound times 11 equals 880 this is greater than 700 so now it's a pass. So that's your calculation to pass the cash flow test. Um, if passed for rule for the average price property in that area with that type of rent, it's still in. Others you may have to rule out. And you might be down to six or seven areas. Okay, what do you do next? So now you need to check the rules. You're down to six to seven areas. Number eight, check demand for the property in the area to check that the check rule. Advertise and check for at least 10 replies. You advertise a fake property. How do you do that? These days you can put it on Zoopla, normally for free. You can advertise it online, Facebook, open rent. You can even advertise in the local newspaper. You can spend 40, 50 quid, but it's worth it. Remember, once you've chosen this area, you've chosen it for life. You're going to marry it, and you're going to love it. So, we advertise a property. Let's say, every street, 
you don't put the exact property down you don't go on right move and advertise someone else's house as you can imagine you don't want to get caught you might say free bed house every street bury um, every street bury and uh, you describe it how is it going to be so houses is on every street in bury might have a garden front and back so you'd say free bed house every street in bury garden front and back just refurbished uh, 650 a calendar month call uh, call this number and what you're looking for is 10 replies within the first week if you don't get 10 replies in the first week you don't buy the property on every street or in that area it does not pass this rule so you've got six areas and you've run the advert in each of them so now you've got four areas with 10 replies two areas you don't great so you're down to four areas now you've rejected the others although you believe you can get the rent you've not got the massive demand for it so now you've got four areas all within a mile of the school all within five miles of a town center all of which have a target price to buy and a target rent what do you do next number nine looking at sold prices not for sale prices over the last year use right move make sure you have at least 10 look at the sold prices not for sale prices over the last year the last year gives you a good feel for the current market conditions or price you use right move you can click on the tab called sold prices and you want at least 10 properties within that mile radius of that property type this will give you solidity for the sale prices okay if you find 10 properties that are all three bedroom semis and match with a garden front and back and have sold within the last 12 months and they've all sold for a range between 95 and 105 pounds you have a great solid feel for what properties are really worth in that area what do you do next number 10 cut off the outliers anything more than 10 grand outside the normal trend make sure at least eight to average so we cut off the outliers if there's one in there for 120 grand and another in there for 83 but all the rest are between 95 and 105 cut off the outliers anything that is 10 grand outside the normal trend okay cuts it off make sure you have at least eight left to average if you haven't got that many then you're probably guessing a bit at the prices work out the average price of a property in this area so we've got eight properties which is our minimum add them up divide by the number of properties to get an average property price of under grand this is what our base our average property price on yeah number 12 knock off 15 percent of that price if the average is under grand which it is then knock off knock off 15 percent of that price so that gets us to 85 grand 85,000 that's your offer price number 13 this is your offer price look at what's on the market and matches your criteria and target property and offer your offer to the estate agent on the property will often be 20 to 25 percent below what they're asking so basically you picked this area you're going to be offering 85,000 on everything you look at what's on the market and matches your criteria and target properties and you offer your offers to the estate agent on the properties remember if the average is on the market for 100 grand some will be on the market for 105 some for 110 and you're going to be offering 85 so you're going to ring up the estate agent 
and you're going to offer eight to five thousand on every house that's for sale so if you've picked an area but now there are six houses that meet your criteria and you're offering eighty five thousand on all of them number 14 remember to position your offer with the estate agent you need to learn to position your offer to the estate agent this is in another, vi in another video this is really vital you need to ring up and offer 85,000 they'll just be thinking you're a waste of time but if you learn to position this in the correct way it can be put forward in the right way number 15 make multiple offers get slapped a lot of times does it sting yes it does but is it worth it yes it is it's like the guy or the lady that go out on the pole at 10 to 2 in the old days yeah 10 to 2 uh, and they're trying to get someone for the night and they get a few slaps around the face but eventually someone succumbs so don't be afraid to get slapped don't be afraid of some no's don't be rejected by no's it's fine for people to say no you're just saying I'm not willing to buy for that uh, I'm not looking to offend you I'll buy for that are you interested are you interested no are you interested no are you interested no are you interested eventually somebody says yes you go brilliant I've made it take donuts each Monday you want to persuade the estate agents to work with you so you build relationships with the estate agents you take them donuts every Monday there were five estate agents where we were working we bought properties and refurbed them every single Monday morning nine o'clock as soon as the doors opened we took them donuts why donuts don't even know they're just like donuts all estate agents simply like donuts after about eight nine ten weeks you become known as a donut man when the type of deal came in uh, that you were looking for the noise in the office would be donut man donut man likes that one yes donut man they would ring donut man and before the property was even marketed front of queue positioning it cost five pounds a week awesome and simple how will you position yourself just take the donuts okay donuts are brilliant appreciate but don't like putting the offers forward normally when you would put an offer in you're offering about eighty five thousand pounds the estate agent who's normally a younger person rings up mr and mrs smith and the conversation goes like hey mr and mrs smith we've got an offer for your property you're not going to like it uh, I've got to give it you by law I've got to forward the offer but you're not going to like it um, I don't want to tell you really but I've got to uh, they've offered 85,000 now if it was positioned in that way what do you think Mr and Mrs Smith are going to think of the offer yeah we don't like it reject so you have to coach the estate agent so start by acknowledging their difficulties they don't they don't want to put the offer forward it's not the favorite thing to do so you say i know you're not going to like this because my offer's not going to be brilliant offer i buy lots and lots of properties but i always want a buyer at discount i want you to make sure if you don't mind emma preferably uh, the name of the agent i want you to make sure you don't offend the vendors I don't want to be offended by my offer so if you wouldn't mind what's what I find best when you put the offer forward could you please let them know up front look you've got some uh, someone deadly serious about buying your property uh, I'll not waste the time and I'll get it done within four weeks so if you want a quick sale uh, I'm a great option they may not like the offer I don't want to affect I don't want to be offended it's just what I do so please don't be offended if you do like it great if you don't that's fine 
Just know it's on the table if you wanted it. And could you please be sure uh, they know I'm serious and I can get it done in four weeks? Would you mind putting that for offer forward like that, Emma? Because if you put it forward like that, they'll understand and they won't be offended. Hopefully, then, Emma, you can put the offer to the vendors in that way. You definitely want to be speaking to the person who's putting the offer in. Emma, is it you that they're putting the offer in? No, no. It's Cheryl, our sales negotiator. OK, could I speak to Cheryl then, please? Sorry, she's not available right now. Uh, can I call her back then? I would like to speak to her about the person who's going to be putting the offer in. Hi, Cheryl. Look, I've got someone deadly serious about buying a property. Uh, I'll not waste the time. I'll get it done in the next four weeks. So if they want a quick sale, then I'm a great option. By the way, uh, I will put it in writing to Cheryl. I will put it in writing exactly what I've just said in words to Cheryl and send it over. She almost has a script in front of her. So Cheryl, I'm going to send this via email. Feel free to send it over to the vendor. It's really important to me that I'm not trying to offend. It's just an offer on the table. Um, it may well not be of any interest, but if they need to sell fast, they know they've got this in the back pocket. Very unoffensive, very unassuming. You've shown that you have an understanding of, of the agent doesn't like putting the offer forward. Uh, you're looking to get the offer put across in the right way. Number 18, when a property is agreed, be ready with your expert team and make it happen. Prove it. So you get 10 slaps. The 11th property gets agreed. You have to be ready to rock and roll. And you have to prove it to the estate agent. Uh, you can't position yourself with buys quickly and then say, Great, it's been agreed. Who's your mortgage broker? And you go, Don't know yet. I'll have to sort that out. Who's your solicitor? I don't know. Need to sort that out. You need to be ready to rock and roll. You need that expert team already in place. If you've not watched it, go and watch the video on it. Go and watch the expert team creator. This is crucial. Remember, the properties that you have don't have to be local to you. Family Let's is an investor strategy. Three to four bedroom houses. Yeah, investor strategy. It's best to outsource this to somebody else to do. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about outsourcing your sourcing. So for about £3,000, you can pay somebody, a professional property sourcer, who makes a living finding awesome deals. So if you're going to do it yourself, then follow these steps. But my generic advice is, uh, the companies out there that kick butt, and they're superb at this, um, and do all the hard yards for you. Outsourcing and paying someone three grand, this can save you a whole world of time. It's better to outsource, but if you're going to do it yourself, these are the steps you're going to need to follow. Here's your homework, yeah? Your fun work. What are the three areas are you going to look into? So, Nottingham, Leeds and Manchester. Is it going to be Nottingham, Sheffield and Rotherham? What's it going to be? What are the areas you're going to do your due, due diligence on? What are the three areas going to be? And remember, it's going to take time in the beginning. It might take you 10, 15, 20 hours of work in the beginning. But once you've identified your golden area, guess what? It's golden forever. Forever. Uh, and you can shop in that area forever. By the way, if you're not trying to attract JV money, imagine explaining this process to someone who has the money. Now you're positioning yourself with the time and the experience. I've already done all the research. This is my exact area here. This is my exact town. This is my exact school. This is the exact reason. Is it is the best place to invest? Wow, imagine the power that gives you. To get other people to invest with you. You need to go and take action now. Do the hard yards. Take the action. 
this is really incredibly powerful once you've done the work once you uh, once you can articulate and talk about it with other people you can find you're able to raise money from people and you can find yourself buying diamond properties instead of buying average properties or, or just good ones you want outsourcing every single time guys this is helpful anyway please hit the like share button don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching thank you